Let's get into some kind of bizarre. <laughs> this could be construed as tinfoil hat, hattery on some level. A little bit weird, but beyond, you know, Washington examiners, I believe that there's uh, kind of right wing leaning. <clears throat> so we're going to take this with a grain of salt. But beyond parody, CNN taps Greta Thunberg for expert coronavirus panel. So this is a real thing. This is actually happening tomorrow night. There's going to be a panel, a coronavirus panel, and Greta Thunberg's on the panel. So a lot of people have a problem with this. Of course, a lot of, you know, Trumper thumpers have a problem with this. Um, I have to say, to say I have mixed feelings about it because on one level, why wouldn't they bring in an actual, like, I think they're bringing in her in for, enter, you know, entertainment value. I think that they know that people are going to be upset about this. So they're, they think they're going to get viewers because they got Greta Thunberg on this panel. And actually, I would believe that that is, as far as a marketing ploy goes, that's brilliant. Because I'll probably watch this <laughs> because she's on it. Is she a climate like expert? Is, you know, is she a person that maybe a lot of mainstream people might think is a climate expert? No. I actually think this is brilliant because Greta Thunberg is totally outspoken, totally not in the pocket of, um, you know, globalist consensus on climate science. She's willing to tell people the truth, even if it's painful. Um, so I'm very interested in what she has to say in this. This is all, you know, it's a little wild and maybe it doesn't make sense, but um, I'm into it just for the the weirdness factor. Anyways, they're they're totally like just trashing. They're trashing, you know, especially people on the right are trashing this whole idea that um, Greta Thunberg is on this coronavirus panel. Uh, I'm on some level I would question it too, but I I actually feel deeply that this is, it's a great thing. Um, and I will be tuning in to see what she has to say or try to tune in. Um, moving on, of course, this is not new news, even though this is dated May 11th. Trump dismantles environment, uh, environmental protections under cover of coronavirus. So, you know, while the while the media is busy, you know, talking about other things, you know, around around Trump, uh, they are not actually paying any attention to this because I never ever hear this on mainstream news, you know, necessarily. I never hear it on the TV. I never hear people talking about what he's doing to environmental protections. Um, maybe on some of the more lefty channels, they might be talking about this, but even on progressive channels, I don't really hear much about this. Um, the Trump administration is diligently weakening U.S. environment protections, protections even amid a global pandemic continuing its rollback as the November election approaches. During the COVID-19 lockdown, U.S. federal agencies have eased fuel efficiency standards for new cars, Frozen rules for soot air pollution proposed to drop review requirements for liquefied natural gas term terminals. Continue to lease public property to oil and gas companies. Sought to speed up per permitting for offshore fish farms and advanced a proposal on mercury pollution from power plants that could make it easier for government. the government to conclude regulations are too costly to justify their benefits. So, um, again... This pandemic is being used to do things kind of behind the scenes that nobody is really paying attention to. Um, nobody's, you know, on the steps of uh, city halls or, or government buildings with firearms talking about we, we need to stop this gutting of EPA protections. Nobody's doing that. Um, I know that people are out there, you know, doing rent strikes and other kind of strikes. 
to raise awareness around worker protections, I think that's absolutely great. Um, I'm wondering if there's ways that um, climate aware activists can can make their voices heard around what's going on around these protections. The government has also relaxed reporting rules for polluters during the, during the pandemic. The Trump administration is playing both offense and defense, rescinding and rewriting some rules and crafting others that would be time consuming for a Democratic president to reverse. The Environmental Protection Agency has written what critics say will be a weak proposal for climate pollution from, from airplanes, uh, a placeholder that will hinder stricter regulation. Uh, Trump officials have been attempting to create a coronavirus relief program for oil and gas corporations. Awesome. And of course, you know, that's going to go through right away. And most likely just, you know, keep your eyes open for how many Democrats are like, of course, we must, we must help these corporations. A new move in his campaign to back the industry and stymie global climate action. The president has sown distrust of climate science and vowed to exit the Paris Climate. Didn't we already do that? Which the U.S. can do after the election. Um, so this has just been a threat all along. He, he, we have, haven't actually done that. I thought we already did that. Historians say Trump's presidency has forced a pendulum swing back from the environmental awakening of the 1960s and 70s when there was bipartisan support for conservation. Um, well, he's forced it back on a governmental level. Uh, as far as people's awareness of it, I think the awareness has only gone up. Um, you know, people are certainly aware of environmental issues and of climate change. Uh, it's the it's the fact that there is a bipartisan squashing of um, action on the environment or very very tepid action. And where is all the resistance? Where's all the democratic resistance to these uh, EPA relaxations of rules? Um, the EPA was spotty at best before Trump was even in office. So, you know, the EPA was doing the bidding of um, uh, GMO producers and fossil fuel companies and all kinds of corporations um, found loopholes to get through EPA requirements even before Trump was in office. So this didn't start with Trump. He's just making it worse. What Trump's done is created a blitzkrieg against the environment, trying to dismantle not just Obama's environmental achievements, but turn back the clock to a pre-Richard Nixon day, said Douglas Brinkley, a history professor at Rice University who is writing a book on the subject. It's just death by a thousand cuts. It's not one issue. It's just across the board. If a Democrat takes the White House, it will take years to reverse some changes, even if they you know, care enough to do that, especially if it's a Joe Biden. Uh, moving faster would require Democrats holding both chambers of com Congress. Even then, industry would fight hard. What about if progressives and climate-aware people um, boycotted the entire process and withheld the, their votes from Democrats, forcing Democrats to either lose their races or take action on climate change? What if we did that? What if we did that to Republicans as well? What if we did that? We could totally do that. Um, lastly, this is going on as well. The USDA is removing safeguards on food while everyone else is fighting a pandemic. We just covered something about this uh, a few weeks ago. Well, yes, this is from April 19th. As the world focuses on the COVID-19 pandemic and its devastating impact on public health, the Trump administration has been busy behind the scenes doubling down on its campaign to deregulate big ag. At the same time, it is not providing safeguards to food production workers and government inspectors who are being made to work on the front lines without frontline employee protections. USDA's Food Safety and Inspection Service is deregulating inspe inspection in some of the largest pork processing facilities by reducing the number of inspectors assigned to the slaughter line. They turn over critical inspection tasks to untrained company employees or remove the cap on how fast the line can run. F FSIS anticipates the 40 hog slaughter facilities will convert to this method, which is being called the new swine inspection system. 
Um, Those 40 facilities process over 92% of all pork in the U.S. Some of the big names in pork processing are pushing for this, such as JBS, Tyson, Smithfield, Clemens, and quality pork processors. In one plant that has been ex experimenting with the new system, FSIS inspectors have 2.6 uh, seconds to determine whether the company employee, employees have performed their tasks properly. As a consequence, it is not uncommon for hog carcasses to be c contaminated with feces, hair, toenails, ah, ugh, and bile to be greenlit for processing into bacon, pork chops, hot dogs, sauce, hot dogs, sausage, and other pork products. Oh my God, disgusting! Hey guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, you can also support the channel with the links below: PayPal, Square, Patreon. Thank you so much.